Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my Twitch stream, I'm Mead, that's at Mead Made, and right now I'm going to keep working on my Cyclops, and I've already blocked out a lot of his colors, I just gotta work on some more, and Basically, I'm just going to keep working on this. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer, but I'll also be talking about uh, just my processes and what I'm currently doing. So, just trying to get set up here. All right, so I've gotten with the Cyclops, I really wanted him to be like more of a classic look, even though he, you know, looks like a more modern X-Men. So I've gotten the classic blue. I had to throw that in. And since all the colors are blocked out, now I've got to do the edging because I really wanted to bring in some of that like classic yellow. And... I was actually thinking about using the school bus yellow, it's folk art. One of the things I like to try to do is keep my painting budget on the cheap so my wife doesn't kill me, honestly. So I use a lot of the, just the acrylic hobby paint. And so the school bus yellow is what I'm probably going to do the trimming on him on the banding here and probably the X. I'm definitely going to be filling in the background of the X with the uh, red, just that classic red. I'll probably go with a little darker. Um, and then on the edging of him, I'm going to do the yellow as well and obviously his visor yellow. Um, so probably going to get started on that portion right now. I know I've got a little bit when I was blocking out my colors it was, you know, I got a little bit of overlap, which happens, so I'm never really too concerned with that, because you can always just go right back over it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. And so if you have any questions along the way, just feel free to ask me, and I'm just going to kind of get right into it. So using this kind of acrylic paint, I definitely recommend watering down your paints just a bit. They don't have to be super runny, but I use a little eyedropper and just put a few drops in and then mix it up real good. So, with my brush. And when it comes to brushes, I honestly, I, I have a few really good brushes, like I actually have these uh, Fine Touch, I like these because they're, you know, short bristles so you have a little more control, but then I have a bunch of these just cheapo brushes that I, I honestly, I go through them pretty quickly. I found personally when I'm doing this, it, I could be using a really expensive brush and it goes just as fast as the cheap one and I get pretty much the same results. I know everybody's different. So, make sure you guys can hear me well. There we go. Hopefully that's better. So, just mixing this up good and it's a good kind of runny consistency now I got my brush dirty so just want to clean it a little bit so I don't have big globs all right so just gonna work on my edging I know I'm pretty blind so I actually have this guy which helps me see uh, he's actually gift from my wife when I started painting a lot 
they're really fantastic because the lenses you can change them out with different magnifications and there's also a little light on there it just helps me to see so with this I'll probably I can already see it's going to take multiple coats because of the yellow and so I'll probably go in with a bigger brush like this and start filling it in and that's not a very good brush to use we'll see how this one works Here we go. So, just start filling in. I know the thinner you get your paints, the less brush strokes you'll see. But this whole thing I've actually painted by hand, so I'm honestly not too concerned with brush strokes. So basically I'm just blocking in the colors so then when I start doing my shading and stuff I got a good base. Probably should have painted over top of all these colors like white or something to help bring this out so I'm not going to have to do so many layers but no one accused me of being super smart. Yeah, I can already tell that this is going to take quite a few layers, probably like two or three. Which will be kind of a pain in the butt when I get up here to the trim, but I'm sure it's going to look good. This model is actually by um, Eastman from his Patreon last month. Very talented. 3D modeler that makes a lot of cool busts. One of the few Patreons I follow, and I just think it's well worth it because he gives you uh, like three models a month. The unfortunate part is, is he actually took a break this month, so he paused the Patreon. Just printed Gambit. He's from an older or past month. And he turned out really good. I know a friend wanted me to print Gambit. So I went ahead and did that. I'm always up for taking requests. I know another one of my followers on Instagram asked me to print Wonder Woman, so I've got a Wonder Woman model that I'm going to be doing next. And I print.
printed this on my Ender 3 Pro. I've actually got two of them. I'm constantly printing. I guess you could call it an addiction. But here we go. First layer's done. Let that dry while I'm going to the next one. Man, I'm kind of sloppy putting down a lot of paint and just to kind of cheat a little bit. That way I don't have to do so many layers, but. Since this is just for me, I don't really mind brush strokes. It gives a character sometimes. The big thing is, is for this model, I was really just testing out some new skin skin tones and trying to figure out how to perfect skin. Because I'm not gonna lie, skin is a pain in the butt for me. I have a lot of problems trying to get get it looking right because I mix a lot of my colors. For this one, I was doing a lot of different washes. I was actually uh, I think it's Sideshow Collectibles. I was watching some of the ways that they do it on YouTube, and there's a lot of very talented painters on there. And I was watching one on how they do skin, I was trying that technique, and it just, it turned out okay, but definitely not the same quality that they were doing. For the uh, skin, essentially the process that they used is they used a bunch of different washes and I was trying that same technique where you basically get down your base pigment, which is a little more on the orange side uh, of like a peach. And then they applied a yellow wash, sealed it, a red wash, and when you're doing the wash, you actually sponge it off to just let it have some of the color in the corners. So then I, you know, sucked up all of that and then did the red to give more of the, you know, pinkish look. And after that, I did uh, a little bit of highlighting and darkening and pushing the shading, and then do a blue wash. And after the blue wash, then I uh, did some more highlighting. So, like, he turned out okay. Excuse me. Too much coffee and breakfast. <laughs> So, yeah, under the arm here is a little bit of, of a challenge. Trying to get in there, make him do a headstand. I know for me, when I'm painting, I'm always trying to brace myself because holding something up like this and doing it like that, you don't have really good control. Done with this round. It's going to be a little better. Yeah, under that arm's pain. Okay. So, oh, just a little bit.
There we go. First bit. Now I'm going to try to get this edge here, which is going to be a little bit of a pain. Make sure I got a good point. But basically, I'm just. I'm not a brush licker. I know uh, there's always two sides of the fence, so I'm always rolling my brush to get a point on stuff. Not that I have anything against that, but there's a lot of artists out there that do it to get their good point. this down a little thicker because I honestly don't want to keep going back over this because it is very detailed right here. So if I put in a little more thicker paint I won't have to keep coming back over it. Because the fear is every single time I go back over it, I'm going to mess up my edging or something and then I'm going to have to go back and redo it. There we go. I think that trim's going to look nice. I know the key for me is I'm just never in a hurry. Because every time I've ever tried to rush something, I find I screw it up. Looking good. Okay. I know one thing I'm always worrying about is like, because I do it constantly, I'm sure if you're a painter, you can sympathize that I'll actually be painting and then I put my hand just over what I painted and then I got to redo it. But it looks like the yellow's already dried, so like by the time I do these rounds of yellow, they should be dry. And 
then I also keep going back over it. If I see a big blob of yellow or something, I'm going to try to smooth that out with my brush. And I just hit his chin with yellow, which is great. More touch up. I personally think that's the key to like when you're painting and stuff, like everything's fixable pretty much. Like if you mess up it's not a big deal. Don't beat yourself up over it. Because I know I don't, don't. When I screw up, I'm just like, meh. <laughs> More work, oh well. It's supposed to be fun. And I'm kind of bleeding over right here because I know what I'm going to be putting. For this little buckle right here, I'm going to be using a silver paint. I actually have a metallic nipple, which I really like. Um, I use it a lot on stuff when it comes to like buckles and stuff. It's, it's a great metallic paint, but you just kind of got to be careful when dealing with metallic paints because if you don't clean your brushes good enough, that, you know, metallic stuff can get in your brushes and ruin them so I'm always washing them like crazy and I also have a few brushes that I'm just I just use for metallic paints because I've ruined quite a few and I didn't understand why I was going through brushes so quick because I'd lose the tip or they'd fray and a friend told me that that's the reason I was pretty much being dumb with them. <laughs> it's good to have honest friends sometimes. Alright. Now to get the visor. Which I'm super excited about. Just work on the edging. So I know personally when I'm painting on the with the edges, I always bring my paint to the edges. I don't just automatically start on the edge. That way I can have more control over it. So kind of just go back and forth and bring that paint right up to the edge and then you can have a nice clean line. That is one of the things that I know I was taught way back in college when I took painting classes because uh, I went to art school. I didn't major in paint, I just liked to do it, but even on a canvas, like it's always good to bring your, when you're creating edges bring your paint to the edge, don't start on the edge. And I always love how terrible things look when you're doing your first coat. Like it's, <laughs> it looks gross. <laughs> All right, so 
back in here under the hair. I don't really care about getting it on the hair because I haven't painted the hair yet. So like if I'm getting it in there, I don't really, it doesn't matter. This is going to be covered up with a darker color and it's going to go pretty quick. My biggest concern is making sure I don't have any big blobs in the cracks so they don't dry there and I lose that detail. Just filling in everything so when that red covers up it's just gonna help me so I can do less layers should probably be using a bigger brush but I'm good <laughs> like I said I'm not in a huge hurry This Cyclops has taken me quite a while to do. Not that it's an intense paint job, it's just I haven't had time. Okay. I know one thing I always do is, you know, it's just a good tip is, you know, let your brush follow the contours. Don't try to force your brush against it. So you always get a better paint flow when you do that. When you're trying to get a good edge. Just kind of let it follow where it needs to go naturally. I'm going to go ahead and switch over. Try and see what we're letting these. Yeah. So when I'm doing little tiny things, instead of just squirting it in here, I know I don't use a wet palette. I know I should, but I just use a regular like art palette. Um, but I'll just dip my brush in water or I'll actually just get it right out of the cap and then dip my brush in water and I'll essentially just mix it right on there when I've got a big area. So like for this, like I'm not using a whole lot of red. 
so I just don't want to squirt a bunch of paint on my palette. And I know if I use a wet palette, I'll be able to keep it. I know all the benefits of a wet palette, and I just honestly, I just never bit the bullet and switched to it. I have some friends that I talk to quite a bit that tell me they love their wet palette, and I need to just do it, but I don't know. There's a lot of pros to using a wet palette, I'll tell you that. So that's going to be the red right there. Because I want to use a duller red and kind of darker in the emblem. And then when it comes to here, I'm going to use like a very, like a brilliant red, like this flag red. And that way it really stands out because I want that that ruby look that Cyclops has but that'll look really good I think so I'm gonna switch over back to my yellow and start applying the second coat and hopefully this is gonna Cover it better. And I'm still going pretty thick with it. I do like a like a little bit of a dabbing motion to kind of leave a lot of extra paint because like I said I don't really care since it's literally just for me like if I was doing this for someone else I would definitely take the time maybe even airbrush mask it off and airbrush it to like really make it look really nice but it's just for fun Yeah, looking back, I probably would have been a little more careful with the blue and not care if I get over the edges, because that would have made my life a little easier right now. But it's those little things that you learn along the way, and everybody makes mistakes. But even if it is a mistake, you can always fix it. So I'm just kind of blocking this out, getting a lot of paint down, and then I'll go back in with a finer point and really get the edge as well, because this is not a good edging brush. My furnace is kicking on. Hoping, hopefully, it's not too loud. <laughs> okay. It's been getting cold here. Fall is upon us.
All right. He's starting to come together. Time for the next band. Probably gonna take two coats the way it's looking. Or three coats. And I'll just stick with this and start the edging automatically. I know one thing I always do is I will start, not always, but most of the time I try to, when I'm doing an edge or something, I'll follow that entire edge because I find when I don't do that, I will end up missing a piece or something like that. So doing the bottom of his cuff all the way around, then I'll go around all the way to the top. It's just one of those workflow things because when I started getting back into painting I realized that like when I got the model done I'm like yeah looking at it and I'm like there's a spot right there I just completely missed and it was because I wasn't following following the edge lines like I was basically just like jumping around everywhere and that can totally happen just about anybody. Lessons learned. Another little thing I do is I'll actually get a good glob on my brush and I just kind of wipe it on it, on the model, and then I'll honestly just use that as almost my, my palette to pull from. So when I'm going to the edge, I basically just keep coming back to that and pushing the paint where I want it to go. It's just one of those things that I've kind of picked up and did. Um, I've seen some painters do that. I've seen some that just get a tiny bit and they work a little bit at a time. I don't think there's a right or wrong. Like when you've got a big area like that, there's nothing wrong with throwing down a big glob in the middle like right there and then just kind of going through. But it's one of those things you're not just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just got the edging done. This is where it's getting harder. I never like to have my like brush out here. I always like I like to hold it really close so I have more control. But like in areas like that, you've got to just kind of get it way out there. So now I'll go to my thicker brush and get some glob here and start getting the center of it now that I've gotten the edging really nice.
I'm gonna have to get some like, music playing in the background or something for when I have nothing to say for the next stream. Still pretty new to Twitch, so I'm gonna have to learn how to do this. I just thought it'd be fun. See my friend Mad Max Miniatures do it, start to do it, and I was on the fence for a while and decided why not. I'm already painting. I paint every weekend on the in the mornings. Good opportunity. All right, so got his bands. I'm just, so I've got my big brush. I'm just gonna go start to block in the big visor here, and then I'll go back in with my edge. And like I said previously, I'm not really concerned about getting it on the hair. Just kind of moving around that big glob I brought on his visor. Just trying to get it nice and even. So unlike the cuff, there's a lot of detail in this visor. So like I don't want to really lose that detail, so it's gonna take a few more thin coats. This is honestly the boring part of painting when you're just blocking out colors. I really like the next step where it's going to get you're going to start to see the detail come out. And like I said, touching things that are wet. I totally just did that on the shield right here. It was wet and I touched it. I make a lot of mistakes, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but that's the thing on the final product, you can't tell because I keep going back over things. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned just in my career as an artist is don't be afraid to make a mistake because if so, you'd n never do anything.
looking pretty good so far. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask and I can answer or anything, honestly. Mm -hmm. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm super into 3D printing. I've been 3D printing for six years now. The technology has come really far. In the beginning, you couldn't do something like this. It was just, but there also wasn't a lot of artists out there making like really amazing models. Now there's just so many talented people coming out of the woodworks. But yeah, when it comes to 3D printing, there's pretty much, at least with the FDM 3D printing, I'm kind of new to resin printing, still learning things. But FDM printing, yeah, there's pretty much nothing I haven't run into when it comes to issues. comes to resin printing I feel like all I'm doing is running into issues <laughs> I keep figuring them out though I think that's the key not to give up on it take some of that paint out. I don't want it in the visor too much. I don't want it globbing. But yeah, there we go. And I think I'm going to go back in with the red. No. I want to get that red done. Nice thing with the darker colors, you have to do less coats because of the pigment. And the lighter colors is more translucent, so you're obviously having to do more more coats. So it looks like this might be my last coat with this, unless some of that black doesn't show up. Or still shows through. Which may be the case, but if so, it's not a big deal. Okay. All right. So now, back to yellow. All right, so sorry about that. Now let's get more yellow.
Hopefully this will be the last boat. Let's go with the bands at least. I just did it again. I almost grabbed right on that red. I know for models that I really care about painting them, like like I've said, I don't really care about making this one uber uber nice, but. I only wear a glove so like the oils on my skin isn't messing up the paint or any of that. But this is just gonna sit up on my shelf when I'm done. So I don't really care that much. I know I'm about to start. Uh, painting some of my turtles, my Ninja Turtles from Prey Collection, which I am extremely excited about, and I will be doing everything I can to make those things look perfect, because I've been wanting to print those for a while, but I've been trying to, you know, finesse some of my techniques and watching other painters of how they do certain techniques because that's the thing about painting you don't just automatically get good at it it takes a lot of practice and I'm not a professional by any means it's just a very addicted hobbyist <laughs> all right I need more more of this. And just a few more drops. Some of this was not fully dry yet, so it's blobbing on me. I typically would take a hair dryer, or put it in front of my fan to dry between each layer, but for this, I figured I'd just keep moving. Lay down. I got my big dog beside me.
His name's Bruno. He keeps me company down here in my paint room. Sorry, got to learn to paint in the middle of the table so everybody can see. I think I might get a different camera too so I can be a little more zoomed in and you can really see what I'm doing. Maybe for tomorrow I can try to do that because I'm going to try to stream every Saturday and Sunday morning. Because that's usually my favorite time to paint. I always get up early and paint while everybody's asleep and before the day has gotten crazy, if you know what I mean. He's starting to come together. Okay. Uh, yeah. I know after every time I finish a model, I always get people asking how long it takes to do these. And I think on average, it's a, it takes me almost eight hours to actually finish uh, a model. And that's not all like 100% time of painting, because sometimes I gotta let them dry between each layer and stuff like that. But they do take time. It's a labor of love, I guess. But, you know, everybody has their hobbies. Because I've got some friends that will spend all day working on their car, and their car is their hobby. Personally, I like just sending my car to a mechanic. edging. I think this is the last coat because it's looking really good.
looking pretty solid. All right. So probably want to get that red one more time. I was trying not to hit it again, but I can still see a little black. Okay. And I'm not really concerned about making it look super clean. Just kind of blotting it in there. Because this is Cardinal Red from Folk Art. It's a pretty good hobby acrylic paint. I like it because it's cheap and, you know, it's got a good amount of pigment in the paints. I've noticed some of the cheaper paints, uh, the pigment isn't as strong. It takes so many coats. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw when I first painted this, I used, where's that? I used this stuff, um, Anita's per all-purpose acrylic, and it's just garbage. I'm not going to lie. I it, it basically just came right off when I did a wash. Because um, typically, if you do a quick wash, like your paint shouldn't come off, but I mean, it just peeled off like his skin was melting. It's kind of terrifying looking. But, uh... Yeah, so I had to actually re-strip him down and then repaint him again, which I'm glad for because his skin turned out a lot better than uh, initially it looked. So, all right, so give me just one second. I have to step away for 30 seconds here. Here we go. Awesome. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do, since I'm waiting on that yellow to dry, I might move in and start on some of the detailing I'm wanting to do. Um, some of this blue I wanted to actually do some dry brush on to bring out some of that detail on the front and back because there's a lot of cool like little detail here that I want. It's like a jersey look. I want to bring that out and then I'm also going to get these I guess they're vents I don't know it looks like a grill on his chest that I'm going to uh, put in some darker colors there like a dark gray um, I'm also probably going to do some black edging along the lines in between the dark blue the dark navy and the light gray um, so first, I think I'm going to start with the dry brush because it's 
Honestly, dry brush is some of my favorite stuff to do. So with that, I actually used true blue on this dark area. And I'm going to want to get a lighter blue. Still dark, though. one so what I'll do is I'll compare these so this one is just a little bit lighter but I think I want to go with something even lighter than that let's Go a little more blue. Mm. This is always the problem picking out the right kind of color you want to do. And I wouldn't call it a problem, I just get a lot of different colors. Cobalt. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. So this is the blue I think I'm going to use. Admiral Award Blue. I'm actually just going to squirt some of that out. And do my dry brush. So first I, gotta, I basically just swirl this around and get the, and dab it because I want to get paint in the bristles before I even go start to brush get the paint off so now I wipe it off because I don't want to waste all the paint then I'm gonna come over here and I'm usually when I'm dry brushing when I first do it I swirl I make a circle pattern and that just helps the pigment get in the bristles and then I start going back and forth until I get like a light shade on my uh, paper towel. Now is when I'm going to go in. I'm going to try my back first, so just as a test. And then I just do like flicks back and forth. And then you can start to see you know, the top edges really start to come out. And I'll jab in there. That really is starting to bring that out, which looks awesome. You can kind of see it on there. But I think the key here is just little bits at a time. And you don't want to stay in one spot. because then you start to get some really big definitions unless that's what you're going for because like right here I'm actually trying to get some of that and so because there's like a muscle there it looks and I want it to come out but the rest I want it to look pretty even so I'm gonna just be pretty even with it and that looks great because you can actually see it. I don't know. I can always throw up some pictures on my Instagram so you can see a closer shot of that. But it's kind of hard to see because it's such a fine detail. It's a very subtle thing. So same thing here. getting in there right on this ridge of that muscle I'm wanting to bring out some of that and 
And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see, just from that view, you can actually see the muscles kind of highlight, which I really like. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the front. And essentially this ridge, you know, the pecs, how they've got like that muscle pull, He's, you've got that in the model. So I'm going to be able to bring that out a lot. And then a lot of these ripples here is what I'm wanting to bring out as well. So you can kind of see the fabric. So once again, just getting some ink on my brush. Originally getting it off. And then brush it until I get that nice tone on my paper towel. So... bringing that out and I'm hitting the edges of this too and I'm gonna to have to come back uh, because these two blues I'm going to do some dry brushing on uh, because on this blue I'm probably going to use uh, either the dark blue I used here or a black to kind of dirty up his suit a little bit I'd like to try to not make him look super clean and pristine. I did a Deadpool a little while ago and I made him look just battle worn because that was for a friend that was wanting that one. So there we go. That looks great, at least in my opinion. <laughs> I know it's hard for you guys to see that little bit of detail. I mean, it is so fine. It looks like a jersey material. And I'm not pressing hard either when I'm dry brushing. I don't know if you are familiar with dry brushing but it's basically you're just you know the pigment grabs on the high spots it's a good way to draw out fine detail so I'm always painting darker in the areas I'm wanting to bring out that detail in a dry brush and it's, it can always be the opposite too you can do lighter and then dry brush a darker pigment to give those outlines but I really like the dry brush technique I use it a lot on my models there we go okay so now that I've got that I'm happy with that I'm gonna probably go in and start on the dry brush of all the blue because I'm still waiting for this yellow to dry it's thicker in areas and I don't want to disturb that pigment um, because there's some areas I'm definitely going to make it black I'm going to do some edging lines and stuff on this but overall I want it to get a little bit of a you know dirt look to it uh, Maybe not dirt, but more of like a rough soot look. So I'll be using like a black, probably. I might even just use uh, a little white to it, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. So I've got this bigger brush I use for dry brushing. So for these areas, because I want it overall, the bristles are a little hard. They didn't clean it good enough last time. 
And this brush is honestly destroyed. Just because of the amount of dry brush I've done on it. So, I'm, this has got too much pigment on it, so I'm going to get rid of this paper towel and get me another one. Because I don't want to blend those colors. Actually, that. What kind of color? Here it is. Uh, wait, nope, that's my metallic. That would be a bad mistake. I'll, you know what, I'm just going to use this. Just solid black. We'll try it. So this is the thing about dry brushing with black that I have found every single time. Don't use a lot. <laughs> less, less is more in this case. So I will definitely make sure that my brush has a lot of the black off of it first before I even attempt this. So like moving it at ang different angles, my brush, that way I know that there's not going to be any big blobs. All right, so we'll start on the back. I want to kind of just give a little bit of highlighting. See, I've already noticed that's way too much. See, I gotta press and get get as much off as you can because this is a subtle, subtle thing. I'll even do this. There we go. You can barely see it on there. So And this is really just a at least I found when you're doing this kind of stuff. It can be random. Not always <laughs> my big dog kicking around stuff. Like I'll do it in areas that, you know, maybe there's some dirt and things like that. And do it super light. Just enough to draw out some of that detail. And this is where I kind of stay back on my brush. Like, just to get some of that out. Because I just kind of want to wisp it almost. Because this isn't my only pass of drawing out detail. I'm going to be doing other things to it. Definitely want to get that neck. So that was the bad thing here, that I actually got some dry brush in here, and I just got my yellow not as pristine, so I'm going to have to hit that again. But I'm okay with that. Like I said, I mean, I make so many mistakes while painting. Like, I'm gonna have, I sometimes gotta go back over things like two or three times. But I don't care. Like, it's just fun. Lessons learned. Sometimes I do learn from my mistakes. And you know what? Other times I definitely don't. <laughs> and I make the same mistakes over and over. But, yeah. Back of the head. Make a little dirt there. Okay. So that is pretty much what I want to do with that. Now, now that I got that, the next thing I'm going to do, first I'll clean my brush. Don't want us to keep that dirty. Okay. Now I'm going to take some one of my detail brushes and come in here and get some of these cracks and these cuts.
cuts. Like, there's some, like, gouges and stuff like that. I really want to get those edges. Um, let me see which point I want to use. I think I'll use this brush. And this is one of my, the fine touch brands. This is just a zero brush round, round tip. Uh, it's a good brush. I, I like this brand of brushes. So this is one of those times where I'm not going to throw in a glob. Like I do keep just a fine tip of paint on it because I'm essentially like I'm drawing. So I'll start in. Wait, is there any on the back? Here, I'll actually start in the back. So what I'm going to do... Just draw a black line down the middle there. Because I want to see some of that separation. It's always fun when you're holding your breath to paint something. So I messed up right there. And one of the things I'll do... If it's a quick mess up, like if I literally catch it right then and there, because I don't really want to go back in and have to fix that, what I'll do is I'll clean my brush real quick, get some water on it, and then just kind of rub back and forth in that area and kind of collect the pigment in my brush. Uh, and it works out pretty well, especially for something like this, because I want it to look dirty. So like if an area is just a little bit darker, that's fine. But for other models, I definitely would have to, you know, go back over it. Okay, so I just wanted that line of separation back there. Now I'll go in and start working on these cuts. And I've got a stray hair on my brush. And that's why I always keep tweezers with me because sometimes when you get a brush, a stray hair will come out and you wouldn't think one hair would make a big difference, but I tell you what, that can screw up your line a lot. Got it. There we go. Uh, okay, so back to that.
And so the key to this is I'm basically just following the path of the gouge in the crease. And then I'm kind of letting it just come out. So I'm not actually starting at the tip of it. I'm actually kind of starting in the middle and flicking out so I can get a really fine point. So there's a big gouge right here in the middle of the ab, and I'm just going to kind of fill that in with black and then make this come out a little thicker. Because it's, it's just a good idea to think about like how this actually would look. So. Sometimes it's actually big, sometimes it's small, like it really just depends. Like if you have a, a background in art or anything and know how shading and things like that work, it really does help because you, it is, this is a drawing, it's just in 3D space. <laughs> So I got that gouge. I don't think there's any more. Ah, uh, well, there is actually one slight one here. And I can put in. I think that's it. Okay. So the next thing is these vents. I'm going to see if I can actually do it with this brush. I might have to go with something else. So I want this. I'm really watering down some of the black so it can flow into it. see what it's going to look like. You can see how it just starts to spread when I touch it. So that was just touching it and it starts to fill in the cracks. So you don't always have to actually brush it in. Like if you actually can, if it's a thicker, uh, more dark pigment. You can allow the flow of the uh, paint to do the job for you. One of the people that I watch and how they paint and stuff uh, which is Mad Max Miniatures, he uh, just showed that he uses a lot of inks. And probably for this area too, this would be a really good area to put some ink in. But So you can see that, that vent really got covered well and it was only a few drops of this watered down black acrylic ink. So the only thing you got to watch out is it will flow, so you want to make sure it's dry before you start flipping it around and stuff. But I don't need to do that because I'm going to also be doing the same thing here. On the front. <laughs> So 
So just a few taps, honestly, with a full brush of watered down paint. And you can fill in those cracks pretty easily. Like another way to get this too is, you know, you don't always have to do it like this way. You can think of it as in reverse. Like I could have left this all black and then I could have either dry brushed this like gray to bring out the cracks or uh, I could have just painted it and went around the cracks. But the way I was blocking out the colors, I just wanted it to be like this. Okay, the detail's starting to come out. Now, same thing on the other side. And if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask them. Always willing to help somebody or give you, tell you how I'm doing it at least. That's the thing about painting. There's no right or wrong. Everybody has different techniques. I found no matter what, just being in the design and art field for quite a few years, let's just say that no matter the experience level you can always learn from someone there we go just a few touches and there they are boom now I gotta get the sides So this side is pretty much dry already, just because it's it's just watered down pigment. There we go. He's really coming to life. Alright, so... Sorry, my other camera here is... moving around okay so we got that I was thinking about maybe doing this as a gold but then if I, this isn't gold I don't know if that'll actually match but I think that'd be kind of a cool thing because I've got some like real like metallic gold paint don't know if that would look cool or not but we've got some more vents back here so I'm just gonna keep touching and let the uh, ink just kinda fall through the cracks or I guess not the ink but the pigment of the paint and it's starting to dry up so I'm gonna have to get some more Mix it up a bit. Try that. There we go.
I think my only warning to using this technique is absolutely make sure that it's a contained area because say if I did that like right over here it would bleed into everything so I actually might do this on the edges here to just give a little more definition to it and just let the ink flow or the, the paint flow but I'm just giving a big drop and then letting it slide down gravity is just taking the the work out of it there we go so for some I might want to hit it again because if it's sticking in one specific area you want to make sure there's enough pigment to dry and actually stay there because when you're doing this with colors you'll find that this is uh, it might take a few because black obviously the black pigment um, is is very dark so you don't need as much like just one is enough because these are like vents and I want it to be a like a nice light gray uh, and then it'll turn out to be a grayish but but yeah oh dad with hobbies how we doing man thanks for stopping by in the middle of Cyclops Okay, so there's that. We've got all of the detailed vents. Those are almost dry, and it's pretty much time to just hit hit this again. Uh, his visor. Oh, I take that back. I'm actually going to get a finer tip brush and hit the vents. I forgot there's vents on the side of his neck so I'm just gonna suck up some ink there in the brush and just kind of tap it in there These are too fine. I'm going to have to just literally paint it. So that was my warning earlier, making sure you actually have enough places for it to go because that was a prime example. It had too many places to go and it was too shallow, so the ink just went everywhere and bled out on me so for these I'm gonna to have to physically paint them like that <laughs> I know you, it's kind of hard to see. Like I said, I'm going to have to get me a new camera. Uh, whoop, get, get a new camera with better detail. So, now here we go with these. Okay, so just looking around here, to let's fix that, and
Okay. Um. Yep. So I'm just gonna block off more of this yellow. This yellow is kind of a pain in the butt. Not gonna lie. So there's just a few spots around the bands that I think I need to add more to. And especially when I was doing some of that dry brushing, it kind of carried over, which happens. But I think this is pretty good for progress today, and because I'm going to quit this stream at 10. Two hours is a pretty long one. But yeah, when I dry brushed, I messed up his edge right there, and his visor still has a lot of work. I might just come back to it later today and hit it a couple more times. But I know me and my boys are we're gonna go on a hike today. Enjoy the fall. But he's getting close. I think I might actually do a little more to this because this is actually like a metallic. On some of the pictures you'll be able to see, but I'll post some pictures of the progress on him on my Instagram. But, uh, like, yeah, this has kind of got a metallic look to it because I was thinking like a leathery armor, which I really like. But really, I think all I've got left is his hair, the visor, and I should be able to finish this up pretty soon. But. He's been kind of a fun paint. I've had some issues with him for sure, which I'm sure you've seen on the, my Instagram if you're on there with his skin, but I really, I really like the amount of detail that the artist Eastman put on him. A lot of different options. Like you could paint this guy a million different ways. So now that the red is good, I'm finally ready to move forward on that, but I don't know. I kind of want to put this gold on it. I've got another gold. Rose gold now. I think a regular gold. Brush. gold so I do this quite a bit where I just do tests I'm not afraid to try something out so let me take one of my junk brushes and I'll just do a quick palette test on it see what it looks like Yeah, it's not as brilliant as I'd like it to be. It's 
kind of too muted. What well, I've got this other one that's more of an antique. And the beauty of that is just wipe it off. <laughs> that's how I handle it. And let me try this one. I kind of like that. I might do that to make the X a little bit different. Um, I don't know if anybody has any comments on that, if they'd rather see it metallic or if I should just make it the yellow. But I think the metallic might look pretty cool. Let's give her a shot. Why not? Yeah, I like that. Makes like it seem like it's another, another uh, Oh, it gives it, you know, more of an emblem look. So, with these metallic paints, they're super thin, so I never water them down. Just because of how thin they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the edges as close as I can. And I try to get rid of any globs possible because I tell you what, like these really show globs like the metallic paints. And this is the uh, Folk Art Brushed Metal series of paints. I like it a lot, but you got to make sure that you kind of spread it out really good. And you can see all the metal flakes in it. So, I don't... I honestly just work out of the cap a lot. Uh, just because it's so thin. So what I'm going to do now... That I've got that... Okay, uh, is switch to a finer point brush. Hey, buddy. Uh, all right, so where did my finer point brush go? So, and these are just like really cheap brushes. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I think I spent eight dollars for a pack of like ten at Walmart or something like I just I go through brushes so I don't spend a lot like honestly my painting budget is really cheap I know I get a lot of questions of like what kind of paints do you use and I think people are surprised that I say I go to Walmart or like Hobby Lobby and just buy their you know cheap acrylic paints I'd like to eventually get me a set of like Vallejo or Army Painter paints or something like that, but I get pretty good results with this stuff. Okay, so just getting those edging really nice, and then when I'm done with this, I'll probably end this stream. Really appreciate everybody being on. Hopefully I've gotten something good out of it, or at least it's something to do.
has is the metallic paints coat really well, but this is definitely going to take two coats. I feel like I can come back to this later today and just knock that out real quick. So tomorrow I am really hoping I'm going to be able to start on my Donatello. I've got some airbrushing yet to do on him. I haven't done his base coat uh, for primer. Okay. I think this is a really good stopping point. All right. I think that is, oh, missed a spot over here. So many nooks and crannies on this X because the X is actually raised and I'm painting the side of the X in the circle. But there we go. I really appreciate everybody watching. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can check out my next stream uh, tomorrow morning, which is Sunday. I'm going to try to do these every Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um, but you can also find me on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram. I'm on there every day. Uh, and I'm always answering people's questions. Uh, I truly try to get back to everybody uh, as quick as I can. But sometimes I get flooded with emails and or, uh, I guess uh, direct messages. But uh, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.